the Tibetan monks, and they would watch the monks levitating 80, 100 feet in the air, and how astonished they were by it. Now, in their teaching was known as the Luciferianism, and I pulled these definitions off of Wikipedia because I think they do a good job of kind of explaining what Luciferianism means, because they don't believe in Satan per se. Luciferian is the embodiment of knowledge and acknowledges the principles of Lucifer as the light of conscious evolution. As a god or as a principle, Lucifer is the light bearer. We know that from the scripture. The light which illuminates the consciousness of sapient beings and heightens the senses and awarenesses to experience higher levels of being. You're on that reincarnation wheel, going round and round, trying to rise up through your chakras to become a Mahatma. Luciferian is in the path of self-attainment. It's the higher self. It is the center path, neither left nor right. For Lucifer is the star that shines in the morning and evening, the point of the light between opposing forces. It is the symbol of the yin-yang, which I had branded on my body. Because I was understanding the pure teaching of Luciferianism is the suffocating. Now we also have another definition. Spiritual Luciferianism has its roots in the esoteric teachings of Western occultism and hermeticism. This view holds that while Satan represents the manifestation of the material realm, Lucifer represents the spiritual, highest spiritual ideal, one's true will, the holy guardian angel. As all material things are energy or light, Lucifer is seen as the creating force of the universe, ever present. Interestingly here, they add, some classically educated Freemasons use Luciferian in their scholarly senses of bringing enlightenment, invoking Prometheus, who stole the fire from the gods to bring to man. So as I was growing up, and I was meeting these illuminated beings, who I believed were my dead ancestors, again, this foundation is spiritualism. I thought I was being brought into the true understanding of one's self-awareness and attaining the higher self. And it started at a very young age. And again, let's look at the term here, Illuminati. It means any various groups claiming special religious enlightenment, persons who were claimed to be unusually enlightened. This is the worldwide headquarters of Freemasonry. Does anybody have any idea where it is? Washington, D.C. So it's in one of the city-state capitals. You can see it almost looks like an Egyptian motif. And interestingly enough, this is located 13 blocks north of the White House. And that's very important in the occult world. We're not going to spend time on that. But even Washington, D.C. itself is laid out on a giant Masonic grid pattern as they were preparing the United States to be the new Atlantis, as we're coming into the dawning of the new age, as they ride, they're trying to reinstate Atlantis again. So the main library of the Supreme Council, 33rd degree of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the Mother Supreme Council of the World, Washington, D.C., is dedicated to Confederate General Albert Pike, the KKK's chief judiciary. And in this Masonic temple, the Albert Pike Memorial Room inside the Supreme Council, 33, which is again located 13 blocks directly north of the White House in Washington, D.C., now, I met a family whose husband was a 32nd degree Freemason, a Shriner. And so when you go to become a 33rd degree, you go here. It's the only place you go in North America. And it's an honorary right. And he was brought into this room, waiting room, with other candidates. And individually they're brought out in front of a host of people. And they asked them, who are you willing to submit your oath to? And he didn't know what the answer was. So they shoveled him back into the waiting room 
And at this time, his family was outside praying for him to get out. He sat, he turned to the man next to him and he said, Who am I swearing an oath to? And the man said, To Lucifer. And he got up and walked out. Now we can actually find here in Isaiah 14, chapter, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will send unto heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the earth. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most because it's all about self attainment And we're going we're to peel this onion layer back a little bit, and we're going to look at some characteristics in the Bible itself, what I call the children of disobedience. This apron, which you see in the top corner, is the Illuminati symbol, the serpent eating its tail. But ye shall not surely die, but ye shall be as God. So I had the three solar burst, and then the clasp, which closed it, and then below is my family's crest, which actually sits on the Vatican floor, because I'm a descendant of Pope Clement of over 700 years ago. That's how far back my family's been caught up in this bloodline of secret societies. And so that's why I was being groomed for what's coming. And this is something that I used to do, levitation. I was a full adept transcendental meditationist by the time I was 12 years old because I had been given the gift to my family's bloodline. Clairvoyance, telekinesis, astral projection, levitation, all things that I thought were normal behavior. And I would talk to my friends at school and I'd say, we don't know what you're talking about, but it's, it's out of this world. You can do this. I had it down to a science. I get home from school, I go to my room, 20 minutes in my mantra, and I was out of my body. Or I'd be levitating off the bed. But did I know what was lifting me off the bed at the time? Devils? No, I didn't know that. And right away there were these illuminated ones right there willing to show me the way. And I've seen some pretty fascinating things that probably would institutionalize. came down where the lake joined 
and right across it was the intelligence center for the state police barracks and the Defar Department of Environmental Conservation Force Rangers, which actually had more authority than the state police in the states. And, I, and it's about midnight, and I see all this activity going on, and so I go and grab a pair of binoculars, and I look out, and here are all these guys. Full regalia, Masonic aprons on. And I'm like, Lord, what have I got myself into? And so I'm standing there on the deck, and I'm panning, and all of a sudden I stop, and I'm looking, and there's a pair of crosshairs looking down my scope. I'm looking into his scope, and he's got a rifle pointed at my head. So I wave, and he nods back at me, and I, I drop to my knees. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. What am I to do? This is in the middle of nowhere, and it's a dark, dark county, completely under their control. And I realized they're not, they're not on the other side of the lake anymore. They're coming around. They're coming for me. And I'm praying, Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? This is it. And small to voice, Mark. Take your shoes and socks off and go outside and tell them you belong to me. Okay, Lord. Okay. So I took off my shoes, I took off my socks, I jumped off the back of the deck and walking out into the woods. The next thing I'm standing in front of this thing, 20 feet tall, in front of me. The God of the dead, the Lord of the underworld, Anubis. And next to him, he's stacking souls wrapped in gunny sacks with their eyes cut out, tied up, wriggling. And he's talking to me, saying, I've already got your soul, Mark. And next thing I know is I look at him and I say, you can have my body, but you can't have my soul. I give it to the Lord. This thing vanishes. These men around me are all backing away. And then a small, still voice says, Mark, go inside. This is not your battle. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. He's knocking at all of our hearts. The reason why the Lord told me to take my shoes and socks off, I didn't realize this, but I read this later in Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. For you are standing is holy ground. So here is my, my God interceding on my behalf and saying, he's mine, he's not yours.